Welcome back to Sean's Unfortunate Life Choices, where we watch My 600 Pound Life together from a former 600 pounder. And we got William, season 12. Yeah, season 12, episode 2. 620 pounds, 34 years old. So he's getting to that point right about where you smack the wall like you're playing NASCAR for the obesity or something. But uh, let's see what William's got going on. Texas, again. A tarp under your bed's crazy. You think he just pees the bed? It's hard to believe that I let my weight drag my life down to this point. I am still mobile, but sometimes I'm in too much pain to want to get out of bed, and some. Wow, this guy's kind of built like a jelly bean. All his weight's in one friggin' spot. Sometimes I just don't want to. Some days I don't feel like moving at all, and I don't feel like I can move. Wow, it just staying on your belly is crazy. It could be better to stay in bed and play video games all day and just relax. Kind of, you know, just avoid the world. Yeah. I move slow. That's either man butter or peanut butter on a shirt. I can't tell you. More than I used to, but I still can get around pretty well. Honestly, most difficult thing about my everyday is getting up every day, getting out of bed. You're going to hear that in every single episode. You get stiff through the night. Everything hurts more. He's got one of the 5X blue tees that I wore in like high school. I feel like it's both physical and mental. I do have pain sometimes, like in my back when I wake up, like my knees and my back and my ankles. My ankles Duh. hurt really bad sometimes, but some of that is also when I'm depressed, not wanting to do anything, to where I just don't want any social interaction with anybody. Would you look at that? Got the full Monty going on. And he's got a little heart tattoo, man. But, yes, you shut yourself down, you hide from the world, I did it too. It's perfectly normal to shut down at this size. Taking a shower is a big challenge for me because of my stomach. I think it's more because you can't get a washcloth to your wiener, but you gotta help. How does he pee? Is he peeing right now? Is that what that is? I can shower on a bad day when I'm in a lot of pain, I would say about five minutes, um, because it's hard to just stand there. What five-year-old did you let draw that cross on your arm? Bending over is a little difficult because my stomach gets in the way. Um, it's harder to lift up my stomach and get underneath. Sometimes I... That shit's infected for sure. He's got like a Rudolph belly all red. I don't always get it as good as I could. That's what she said. It just... Wow, look at those things, man. That's makes crazy. me feel uncomfortable. Like, I just don't want to be around people because it could stink, and I don't want to worry about that. I would say I'd... Once you lose weight, you'll become obsessed with smelling good because you know you stunk when you were 600 pounds. I have seen myself degrade as far as, like, things are getting harder and worse a little bit, little every day. How fast I'm moving or how breath I get at times. Um, sometimes, it get, like I said, it gets worse. Really? Because so far, he's a speed demon for my 600-pound life. I feel very limited on where I can go. Mostly, I only go to the store. The ability to breathe, I've noticed some days gets really bad to where I can only 
walk maybe halfway and then I have to turn around and go back because I'm too tired. It's because your triple chin starts to choke you out. Like, I didn't think I had a neck until just recently. And then sometimes just walking up and down stairs or lifting things will cause the breath to go away. So my mom had started coming over to help out with food and stuff. Oh no, here comes mommy dearest. It's always the mom making the damn food, right? Thinking they're loving them. Just showing love. Love them to death. Oh, hey, Mom. Hi, Willie. Mom's getting a little close to a doctor now visit her damn self. I thought I'd cook you some breakfast. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Food for me is a drug. A drug, a coping mechanism, something like that. You're just lucky you can't overdose on an omelet. All right, I want to make sure I make you enough. All right. When William wakes up in the morning, he's stressing about something, and he's trying to use the food to... Holy shit, say some eggs for us. Isn't there an egg shortage, or is that still going on? I'm blaming this damn lady. Make it go away. Oh my gosh, right now, William is so dishonest with himself about his eating habits. But I almost never see joy in him. So yes, probably partly my fault because it was me giving him the food because I want to see joy in him. I know she's seen joy in this guy, even if it's just an almond joy. But yes, you die a little bit inside. Hopefully he can figure out how to be happy again. It's really sad, but that's how it works. Him. But I, I really feel that as a mother, you do the best of what you think you have available. Here it comes, Willie. Okay. Here comes the Willie. There you go. Is that what she said? That's also a hell of a pile. I used to do that. I'd cut up like four potatoes and just crush them. When I'm eating my mom's cooking, even when I'm starting to feel full, I just can't stop. I've always had a big appetite. What a happy baby. He does not know what's coming in his future. We're all innocent at that age, though. None of us know how much life sucks sometimes. I think it's because growing up every day revolved around sports. Really? My dad left before I was born. My grandparents were basketball fanatics. And my mom made a living coaching Little League at school. Hold the phone. This lady was a coach? Like the bad news bears or something? Or bad news of friggin' obesity or something, I don't know. And we all got really close watching and playing games together. When William was a little boy, his attention span was about two seconds, so you always had to be on your toes. He'd run into trees because he'd be so excited to play him with something that he wasn't paying attention where he was going. If your kid's running into trees, uh, we might need to do something there. For the most part, my early childhood was pretty great. But then around the time I was seven or eight, my mom lost her job coaching Little League. And there weren't... No friggin' wonder. Like, if her son's overweight and everyone else, she's probably just a terrible coach, honestly. I can't say that for a fact, but I had a coach that was a preacher when I was little. That guy sucked. He pretended he was Spider-Man the whole damn time. We never won a game. There weren't any other coaching jobs in the area, so she had to work out of state. My brother and I were left with our grandparents. And I mean, my mom would come back to visit. But when she was gone... Are we watching the right show, or did he swap out photos with somebody? Because this is not a future 600-pounder. On for weeks on end, and it was the first time I remember feeling really down. And so after I ate, I would feel better. And that's when my relationship with food first started to go south. Middle school was where the trouble started. I don't know if you... I can't tell you enough how much, like, middle school sucks for overweight kids. You would call it gangs, but it was people who had that thug mentality. I went from being an athlete to this moody kid with the wild temper. Why does this kid have a sword at his friend? All right, whatever. 
depending on what kind of day it was. Sometimes I'd be able to control the temper, sometimes I wouldn't. Just if somebody felt like they wanted to fight, I would step in and defend anybody, especially if they were smaller or not as athletic or not. A really? We're just acting like a supersized shield or something? Let people fight their own battles is what I say. Able to defend themselves. And then I would go home and eat. It was when I really first started noticing there's something not right here. There'd be days where I felt differently than I normally did for no reason. These periods would last anywhere from an hour to several days at a time. And I didn't realize what it was at first. I just knew something was off with me. And then. Okay, well, if he's clearly suffering depression like that, it makes a lot more sense how he just kind of turned to food to kind of like shield himself. And he probably just doesn't have any kind of self-belief in himself. So he just let himself get here. And that's when I was kind of looking at things and realizing, hey, this could be depression. I'd be fine, and then all of a sudden, I'd feel really down and just not myself. Do you want some more, Will? Uh, sure. Holy sh... I didn't think there was any way he could take down two plates of that. That's a lot of damn food. Then, right around the time I started getting depressed, during basketball, I partially tore my ACL to the point to where it's be basically being held on by strands. So I was mobile on crutches. My dream was always to play professional sports, whether baseball, basketball, or football. When I, I think that's every kid's dream. Like I wanted to be Cal Ripken so damn bad when I was a little kid. Couldn't really be active and not be able to play sports, not be able to work out, not be able to do anything, and led to a really bad depression. I started playing a whole lot of video games and I barricaded myself into a room and didn't let nobody else in. And that's when food, it just kind of substituted everything. My senior year, my ACL healed, but the depression never lifted. And then I just kind of got tired of just playing sports and I just wanted to do something different. And part of that was the depression because I didn't feel motivated to do anything. Unless you've actually felt that way before, I don't think anyone would understand that just feeling of not wanting to do anything at all. Like, you just totally shut down to the world. So I understand where he's coming from right here. I didn't have, like, a backup plan or anything like that. I like the idea of being a positive influence on people somehow. So after I graduated high school, I ended up transferring over to Job Corps. Want to go to school to be a correctional officer? Holy shit, we got Rick Ross of the Reese Cups. Did you guys know Rick Ross was like a CO and just stole somebody else's identity pretty much? Job Corps was great because it gave me a free place to live. While I got paid to get certified for both armed and unarmed security as well as to work corrections. And then while I was finishing my studies, I noticed this fellow student who was overweight like me. How exactly would he work as armed security, though, if he can't put on a holster? What, is he going to tuck a firearm up under his fupa and just pull it on you? And we started talking, and then it quickly developed into something where we became very comfortable doing just about anything together. So then we dated for about three months, and then we just randomly decided to get married, and it was just kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing. It wasn't like a thought-out process. Holy shit, this is 90 Day Fiance. Why would you do that to your damn self? Some people can pull it off, the quick marriages. I think you don't know anybody in 90 days at all. Yes, or what the future holds, anything like that. She walks up, she goes, I'm William's girlfriend. I was like, oh no. <laughs> so I tried to talk him into living together. <laughs> I tried to talk. I think you definitely should live together before you get married, because you might just end up hating each other. Talk him out of getting married. I said, living together, you'll get to know each other. I don't think the marriage is the right thing right now. But nobody listened to me because her parents pushed for them to get married. We moved to Colorado, and I did work security for a little bit. But I realized really quickly that security was not what I wanted to do. So, Bro, 
I was a friggin' security guard too. It is the most boring job. I'd spend 10 hours watching paint dry. But I have a little bit of fun with it. I used to call the HR lady and sing on her answering machine sometimes. So in terms of other jobs, customer service was what's available. I even started looking at studying video game programming. But just as I was doing that, my marriage came to an end. Willie, are you ready to go to the grocery store? Yeah, I am. What do you want? What are you gonna get? Uh, I don't know. Probably some like chicken. Some definitely get some soda. I think I'm out completely now. Okay. Grocery store equals like diabetic Disneyland. We love that damn place. Okay. My wife and I were together for five years, and we no longer had those same feelings for each other. Like we loved each other, but we weren't in love. And I think we woke up one day realizing that, and so we separated, thinking maybe separation will work on it. We tried to. I'd like to see her her side of this story because I always like when one person tells their side of the divorce, and then you hear the other, and it's just totally freaking different. Get back together, and it just did not seem like it was the right thing to do. It was literally, here's the divorce paperwork, sign it, done, okay, done. I still had my job in customer service, but starting over was hard. Rents in Colorado were really expensive, so I moved back to Texas. Staying in hotel rooms just to kind of make it things e cheaper on me, and I was working the night shift from home. What universe does staying in a hotel make things cheaper or easier or any of that? A hotel would be hell to stay in all the time. The phone systems weren't working right for the overnight people, but instead of addressing the issue and resolving it, they just kind of got rid of the people that were having the issues. They just kind of got rid of me. And then I moved out of my hotel room, and that's when the depression started to creep up on me. Because even when... Okay. So 100% an emotional eater, he's going to struggle with that. It's obviously never going to be easy. If you eat your feelings, because you're going to feel a lot. There's, it's impossible not to. And it's agreeable. I mean, it's divorce. It's rough. It's tough. It does take a toll mentally. I just kept it all in, and I didn't talk to anybody about it. I typically tell, like, friends or them that are struggling with, like, a breakup. It's always better to focus on yourself and just try to better yourself, because... You're never going to, like, lose somebody by working on yourself. But you are going to lose them if you don't do a damn thing. I turned back to junk food. And I started playing a lot of video games and not really being active and just sitting there. And I noticed the weight was coming on and wasn't going back off. The habits changed after his divorce. And he started using food as a coping mechanism. We got two gamers in a row on My 600 Pound Life. Damn, that sucks. Gamers are down bad. Also, he's probably just looking for an e-girlfriend. To hide his feelings. And that's when I kind of just realized I had a food addiction. When it got you to think? a point to where I didn't feel comfortable climbing stairs because I was too heavy. I joined the gym and walked on the treadmill for 30 minutes to an hour. And they had a big TV screen and so you could watch a movie while you were walking. But just being the size I was, felt like I was being looked at and stared at. It could have been a mental thing. Uh, it's usually kind of meant people are going to stare. They usually don't see people get this big, but at least he was working on himself. But you just kind of got to block that stuff out. I mean, I would have given him something to look at personally, but I, I can't really say that, I guess, because I kind of hit away too. I didn't really want to see a bunch of people. Um, but I, I didn't see any changes, and so I just kind of stopped going. And so it just kind of spiraled from there out of control until now. My depression, it's kind of something I keep close to me and I just kind of keep it quiet. I'm just very blocked in. He's definitely saying all the right things for like reasons he got here. This is nothing new for us at all. We've heard this line of reasoning like a hundred times. Kind of cut everybody out when I started gaining weight, kind of. As I got bigger, I just kind of distanced myself from everybody. I do have to have somebody drive me to the grocery store because it is hard to get behind a steering wheel. I mean, I wish I could imagine, but I bruised myself getting into a damn car. Man, I used to jam into that steering wheel so hard. I just wanted to drive. 
I could go by myself just because I'm in my 30s, but life can be very challenging in this way because there's not a lot of places that are built or made for heavier people. So it's harder to get places, go to the grocery store and stuff like that. He walk like that though. He's constantly leaning back. You'd think that would be hard. The main thing I can't stop myself from buying when I'm at the grocery store is probably soda. That's what motivates me to come down here. I Damn, that's a lot of Dr. Pepper is the best soda by far. But you don't need that much. I usually go through a six pack of those within a couple of hours. Holy shit. There. And as a parent, unfortunately, there's really no guidebook. Lady, you're cooking all his stuff. He is an adult at this point. I think the screw-ups in early childhood or being a like, first-time parent are way out the window at this point. Did we teach them the right things? Did we do what we should have done as a mother? Every child is different. Every need is different. But at the end... I always call your first one the screw-up or the test child because you're definitely going to mess them up a little bit at first. At the end of the day, as a mother, it was my job to probably keep, teach him healthy eating. Here's some cupcakes. Yeah, lady, here's some cupcakes to the My 600 Pound Life contestant. You got hot dogs already? Yes. I don't do a whole lot of vegetables. Mostly, I cook meat up and eat it. The only thing I saw was you sucked down a glizzy earlier. You had potatoes, eggs, that wasn't just meat. The thing that I enjoy most about food is the taste and the flavors. I don't really find the way I eat different than anybody else, but I do notice that people are staring at me. It makes me nervous. And then I want to get what I need and get out as quickly as possible. Before I start Bro, what kind of backwoods grocery store is this? This is definitely some kind of little piggly wiggly thing. To get claustrophobic. Sun chips, they didn't blur it. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. But to see him where he is now and not being responsible enough to understand the impact it has on his weight, his body, the people that love him around him, is devastating to me. If it's devastating, why are you showing up to cook breakfast? And why are you asking if he wants seconds and making sure that he has enough? Shopping with William is like a crashing plane. You can't stop it. You can't control it. You have to just... That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Who made this the morbid Malaysian airline? Just let it do what it's doing. And it's just... It is heartbreaking to know that you can't help your son. William, I'm not going up the stairs. I'm going to leave the bags at the bottom of the stairs. All right. William has... There's the first time she's encouraged a little bit of exercise, but stairs are nemesis. His knees have to hurt for sure. To stand up and take care of William. He can't rely on mommy to take care of William. He can't rely on society to take care of William. William needs to realize, I have to lose this weight. Not, oh, well, mom will do this for me, or this person will do that. Why would he have to realize that? Mom is doing everything for him, so he has to do nothing. You are over-mothering him. He doesn't stand a chance with that going on. For me, he's got to take charge. And once he loves himself enough to take charge, his whole world is going to open up. I think loving himself would be a little issue, considering where his stomach is, but all right. Holy shit. I feel like life is passing me by. I spend most of my day pretty much here in my living room. Sometimes I go a month without any depression issues, and then sometimes it's there for... I 
feel bad he's depressed, but when he's doubling up on DiGiorno, like, what the hell do you think? You're depressed because you're weight. You're doubling up on DiGiorno. You only got junk pretty much at the grocery store. For several months straight through without a break, and that's when eating becomes like a way to cover a hole. You put Pringles on top of the pizza. Holy shit, that's a fat ass move. I never did that. I bet it tastes good though. And I know that how I'm living. Three Dr. Peppers? How many calories is that? That's gotta be at least 500. Right now, can't go on for much longer. If I don't change, my heart is gonna keep getting worse until it gives out. But I'm also not ready to give up food. When I feel really down and depressed, and I'll go through a gallon of ice cream in a day if I feel that down and depressed. Bro, your heart is basically the little engine that could, and that shit is going off the rails quick. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. My situation is at a breaking point. I need to get help. Oh, okay, I see his off. There's his face. <laughs> no way, Doctor now has his photo. What are you doing that for? That's basically a scarecrow for fat people. You're going to scare us all off if we see your mug on the side of that building. I really hope I lost some good weight. And I'm down under 600 right now. Because I worked hard to start turning things around. And if I haven't lost much after that, it's going to be really discouraging for me. Well, that's a first. Nobody starts a diet before they're on the show already. So this guy's already miles ahead of other people. Somebody told me that this looks like a car dealership, but I haven't been able to unsee it since then. I've been dieting already for the past few weeks. I'm really hoping that my hard work paid off and that I'm under 600. The show, buddy. 600 pound life, not 592, you scam artist. You did lose some weight. I didn't realize I lost that much. If you'll go down the hallway to the left, room five, I'll let the doctor know you're ready. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. So, you must be William. Yes, sir. There's this young lady with you. That's my mom. <laughs> Hi, doctor. Ooh, doctor, now you dog you. Coming here just straight macking on the woman? Doctor, no. How you doing? I'm fine. Good. Well, nice to meet you both. So, William, you are, what, 34 years old? 34, yeah. And you weighed 500 pounds, you too? Pan, huh? Yep. I just thought that he could become William's stepdad, and that would make this weight loss thing go real quick, because I guarantee he would kick your ass if he was in the house with you. Um, so I've lost probably 20 pounds or so in the last probably month or so. So what is the highest weight you have been? Um... Actually, come to think of it, he has to be full of shit. I just watched his breakfast. There's no way in hell he lost 20 pounds. When I weighed myself, the highest weight that I know of was 620, and that was a couple months ago. Okay, do you work? Um, I just lost my job, so I'm looking for a new one. But I can't drive because my stomach gets in the way of the steering wheel. And so who takes you around when you need to go somewhere? Uh, my mom did. So she's a designated driver? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Like the Dunkin' Donuts driver, because she only takes them to get food, probably. Yes, and mom would like to quit being a designated <laughs> driver. All right, do you eat at home or you eat out? Um, I used to eat out a lot, um, but I've started eating at home more, um, just because it does make me feel better, and I know it is a lot. Just because you have a personal chef coming to your house and cooking for you. Not healthier as well. So, Mom, is that that green with you? I'm not telling the whole story. I'm fine. Quiet, Mom. Snitches get stitches. Any out when he buys groceries, he's buying things like frozen burritos, frozen hot wings, um, ice cream, chips, sodas. So he, he leave those out for me. <laughs> no, I haven't actually bought any of that stuff in probably two weeks or so. 
two weeks, you're still stocked up. You just got like 17 friggin' 12 packs of Dr. Pepper. Oh, two weeks. So, Mom, you yourself are struggling with the weight too, right? I Get her, Doc. He No fatty left behind. I swear, if you're like 20 pounds overweight, stay away from this man. He's coming for you. I am. So the whole goal is I'm going to follow the same diet that you give him so I can support him. And I can also re achieve my goals by helping him. All right. So how motivated you are to change? I'm extremely motivated. I really want to change um, and get back into a healthier way so I can do. He's saying all the right things. Like, when I'm watching this show, he's saying exactly what I want to hear for people I think will be successful. So maybe he's got it. Do more and have more fun. Okay. Well, either of you have any fun questions? Betty. Um, one of my big concerns is his stomach is, like, fire red and got sores on it. And it scares me because I don't know what kind of infection he has. Let me take a look at your stomach. I was thinking that at the start. His stomach 100% looked infected. And see what's going on. Okay. Ooh, baby. Slap my ass and well, call me Sally. Yeah, I see all these things. That That is a, a skin infection from the sore you got. So we need to get you some antibiotic to take. Okay. Can you lift it up? Yeah. And you got a fungal infection in the groin, too. He can't scrub that, so he can't keep the moisture out. He's gonna. You could buy antifungal cream over the friggin' counter, though. And that is um, really problematic. So, um, you know, you need to lose uh, a lot of weight real quick. Yeah. And the weight you lose, then this is gonna go down. Okay. All right. Okay. I see that as um, really a problematic situation. Did we really have to go bare ass just to pull the front up? That's insane. I need to get you some antifungal treatment and antibiotic for the disinfection you got. Okay. And um, I'm going to start you on some diet. Okay. I'm going to get you to stick with the 1,200 calorie a day, high protein, low carb diet. And also, I'm going to give you some instruction for doing some exercise plan. Okay. I want you to do an hour of exercise in the morning and a, an hour in the evening. Okay. Uh, he's mobile, so he should be able to pull that off. A lot of the other people on the show can't do that much off the rip, like, from the start. That is going to be on up to you to make those changes. Yeah. Eventually, if you show me you can make those changes, we consider weight loss surgery for you. Easily going to be able to lose much more than 30 to 40 pounds a month. Okay. But your goal is only 70 pounds over two months. Okay. I love how he says only 70, but it's doable, man. He said a lot more to other people, but that still is kind of intimidating to us. All right. Any questions? Uh, no. All right, so we'll see you in about eight weeks and see what kind of progress you're making. In the meantime, if you need anything, give me a call. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Now. See you all later. All right, Bye. thank you. All right, he's got a goal, he's got his diet. He said he's already lost 20 pounds, which I find very unbelievable, but we'll see if he can pull it off. I think it's very obtainable. I mean, I'm gonna have, probably have some slip ups. I'm human, we all make mistakes, but I'm gonna try my best to stay and do exactly as he says. We're all human, right? So everybody's gonna slip up, mess up, do all that. I just kind of want to touch on that. There's something that really stuck with me and it was this saying where it was like, uh, success is walking from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. So you just have to be able to kind of keep yourself in a, like a better mood while, even while you're failing. And that's a success. It's been a week since I've seen Dr. Now. And I've been doing the diet and all the exercises since the... When did he get bald? I just noticed that. The minute I got back. And I'm treating this like a whole new start to my life. So I decided I wanted a whole new look. One that will make me feel just a little lighter. <laughs> really? You cut your hair off to lose any extra poundage? Kind of, uh, not very orthodox, but I'll take it. It's got to weigh something, right? So far it hasn't been easy, but I'm trying to work my hardest at doing everything I need. 
The doctor now gave me a bunch of like arm exercises and leg exercises and things like that because can't really do push-ups or sit-ups because of my weight. He can walk though. I thought those exercises for the people who just like really couldn't get up to do the like flap your wings and stretch your fupa thing. So he gave me other alternatives to kind of help with the weight loss as well. The hardest part is all the walking. Really? Because you just went down without holding the rail or anything like a champ. I've never seen somebody do that in my 600 pound life. It feels good to get outside my apartment, but I get winded pretty quickly. Oh yeah, this is going to be like breath ASMR this whole damn time. This is what you guys would hear in your ear if he was, you know. I feel really good right now. It's kind of an improvement from what I've been walking, so it's gone a little bit further each time I go out and walk. He is actually surprisingly mobile. I wasn't expecting this at all. And then when I'm done is when I get the most hungry. And I end up wanting to eat more than I should. Sweet Jesus, we're calling our personal chef. This lady is friggin' sabotage right here. She comes over, it's all get, like game over. Hello? Hey, Mom. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm hungry. Can you pick up some salad? I guess. It's just like a chicken salad with ranch. Salad ain't bad. I know it can't have ranch, though. That's got carbs in it. All right. All right, thank you, Mom. No problem. You're right. welcome. See you in a little bit. All right, love you, bye. Love you, bye. So I know I'm trying my best, and I'm trying to do the diet, too. I go over Dr. Now's book every day, and my mom's been helping me find healthier options that I can order. Oh my god, he's sweeping up the crumbs to hide the evidence. I thought he was doing good. Oh, we're in trouble, aren't we? This ship's going down quicker than the damn Titanic. you some salads for lunch. I just wanted to make sure you're eating healthy, you're following right. your diet. Yeah, I am. I just went for a walk earlier, probably can go for a walk later on today as well. Okay, Paul. I gotta see this salad, because you can do unhealthy salad. That diet, because you got a long road to go. Oh, I know. All right, thank you, Mom. You're welcome. Love you. I love you. <laughs> Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. The only issue with those meals is the portion sizes are usually bigger than what Dr. Now's book says. Oh, fuck me sideways. No shot. We're on a carb-free diet. Is that, like, fried freaking chicken in there with some... Oh, dude. You're effing up big time. I'm fucked. I thought he was gonna do good. But at the same time, it's hard to feel full on his portion sizes. That's what she said. And so I'm just working on now more so focused on the overeating as well as um, the sweet tooth cravings. Uh, you you kind of kind of learn to be hungry because you've stretched your stomach out to a point where like you're just going to be hungry a lot once you're this big. But I've been working hard and it feels good, like a sense of accomplishment. And I'm hoping I show Dr. Now what he needs to see so I can move ahead without delay. Because I know I I think we're screwed, guys. I didn't, I, I expected this was a good one. I can excel with his program, and I feel like I already am. Hi, welcome in, what would you like? No way, he works at a drive-thru. One for you, one for me. We're screwed, why did he do this? A two chicken combo, uh, with fries, okay, and um, a second one of those, okay. I got a new job at a restaurant, and I think Dr. Now will be happy with it, because it keeps... Oh, you clearly don't. You've never watched the show. Never. He would never recommend this to a food addict. Me active, and it gets me out in the world. Alright, so it'll be 1884. 
I'm excited because I'm going to work because it gets me out of the house and it kind of gives me that uh, interaction with others. Okay, I got you. I'd rather deep fry my balls than watch what is going to happen right here because this is not going to end up well. I do have challenges moving around the work just because it's small areas, um, so it's a little bit harder to maneuver. I mean, the most demanding task with work is just being on my feet is the, most, is the hardest thing I have to do. Is he working at Long John Silver's? Because that place is friggin' gross, man. Okay. A lot of times I do get really exhausted after work, so I don't want to do anything or don't have the energy to do anything. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It does make it a little challenging, but it's not too bad. It's not unmanageable. I think we need to get him a second wife because this guy's missing out on all kinds of cardio opportunities that I think would get him to stick to this damn diet. Work is a big motivation to lose weight. I'd be able to have my life back and be able to do things outside of work too that I want to do. So there's a lot of things that are kind of motivating me to lose the weight. How you doing? I feel so bad for this guy because I know he suffers from depression, right? And I know that if he was successful, he would just find a whole new level of self-worth. And uh, right now, I just don't see that being possible with the circumstances he's put himself in. Losing 70 pounds is a lot. But hopefully I lost most of that. And I'll be down in the... Shit, I can already tell he didn't. I'm getting better at seeing and figuring it. I used to think I was fat blind. I just got so fat, I can't tell anymore. But I'm pretty damn sure that this didn't go well. This guy friggin' went hog wild on some hash browns here or some, what were they, hush puppies? Below 500. I'm hoping I am and I get approved for surgery today. That would be the best. Okay, can you step on the scale for me? That's the step I need the most and I've worked really hard to try and make that happen by today. So I feel like I deserve it. And hopefully it's enough. You don't re deserve it like earned it you kind of word that differently my dude at my last appointment i was 592 and i was supposed to lose 70 pounds today which means i should be down to 522 oh shit this guy was long dong like long dong and the long john silvers oh we screwed up big time Alright, we're gonna go to room 5 and then I'll let the doctor know you're okay. ready. Okay. I guess technically, I lost some weight before I even met Dr. Nell. So if you include that, my weight loss is a little more impressive. I should have picked a different episode. This is really gonna take me off. Oh, God. Alright, William. It's been three months since I saw you. I thought you would never come back. <laughs> and I'm busy with work. I got a new job. It was 12 pounds in three months, not two? Wow, this guy took x lax that's all he did. Um, so I've been working a whole lot. It's... You got a job, so what are you doing now? I work at a fast food place now. So you now work with fast food, and you lost the whole 12 pounds in three months, which will be four pounds a month. And that work progress means you miss one hamburger each month. <laughs> No, oh, Doctor Now ain't gonna like this not one bit. Once he figures out this guy's the freak Nick with the French fries guy in the back of the friggin' restaurant. <laughs> you think that's funny? No, I mean, um, I don't know. Like, uh, I know it's the soda because I haven't fully given that up. Um, I need to just give that up. So, I mean, I know. Probably a great idea for our diet. My 600 pound life. We can't drink soda. Who the hell said that? So that's part of it, but I'm also looking at other ideas for lunches so that way I can kind of help with the weight loss as well. So we give you the diet to follow and you're trying to figure out another way to lose weight. So what? That's just a recommendation, Doc. Like, who really sticks to that? You know what I'm saying? What is your objective coming here? What do you want us to do? Make you lose weight magically? Take my stomach. Poof. Abracadabra. I'm going to lose weight and lose my ass. So what are you going to do now? I'm going to keep going and keep trying to improve and keep 
was, was losing the weight. Um, I mean, I just try to follow the diet a little bit stricter, a little bit better. Uh, oh, this guy's a master at saying whatever he thinks you want to hear. He's so worried about pissing people off. Just tell, I like people that are more blunt than this. Like, I want you to be straight up with me. If you don't like me, tell me, fuck your face. Like, I don't. Um, a little bit is not going to work. I try to do better is just fear of speech. You think I'm going to buy that? You're doing okay and pat you in the back and say, do a little better, cut the, a little bit more soda, you're going to be okay? So, Mom, you were supposed to help him to do this. So you tell me what's going on with him. I don't think. Yeah, what's going on, Krispy Kreme Crip, like Crip Keeper over here? You had to have a little play in this one, too. He know, puts enough energy into it, enough thought into what he's putting in his mouth. And ah, energy's the problem. Let's buy him a Red Bull. And the excuses are easier than the action. You both seem to have figure of speeches down, because that's all you were saying. How about the solution for him? What do you I mean, this is verbal gymnastics if I've ever seen it. What do you think that will be? The solution's gonna have to be, he's gonna have to be more focused on what he eats, and instead of eating a hamburger or chicken nuggets at work, eat his salad from work. Sure, let's give him the limitless pill for concentration. That'll make him drop calories. No, stop eating. Basically followed the diet I gave him three months ago. That didn't translate on any changes that is meaningful. So why assume that this time he will go and do it? I have no idea, doctor. Now I I ask him every single day what he eats. Can we give him one of them little party city balloons they gave the other lady we watched? Cause that probably would help. And I still act like I didn't lose any weight. Okay, you lost 12 pounds in three months, and you think that's a victory lap. Damn right, Doc. Give me the trophy already, baby. 12 pounds? Come on. 12 pounds is nothing. You should have lost that in one week. You're kidding yourself with food and playing games. And if that is how you're going to approach this, then we're done with you. There's nothing I can do for you. To be fair, he said something about playing a lot of games at the start, so I should have picked up on the foreshadowing there. Yes, I didn't follow the diet to a T, but I did change little things to where I wasn't just constantly gorging myself with food. Yeah, little Caesars, that's about the only thing you changed. You expect me to believe that? If you did that, why in the board you only lost 12 pounds in three months? I don't know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not somebody inside my body, I don't know, I can't make, I can't. I can't. Hold on, hold on, guess what? I'm a doctor, I can't tell you why, because Take the stethoscope, Doc. Feel me up. You gotta tell me what's wrong with me. I know I dieted. You're lying to me, and you're lying to yourself, if you believe that. Now that I see the scale, and I see how serious it is to follow... Oh, no. He's got a bleach boner, too. Look at that. He's dyed his boxers. That diet, like, it makes me want to follow the diet and stick to it and be healthier and be more active. Well... I don't believe you. I don't think she believes you either. I don't. And that's just gonna I don't believe. I don't believe you either, little miss. I gotta make sure you're full giving 20 eggs. Listen to it. All I hear is excuses. You've been carrying this weight for almost 10 years. Your body is carrying the weight of three people. How long do you think your heart can carry this? He's only had to deal with it for 10 years? This guy's a frick. I had to do it for 25. I know. You want your mother to bury you, is that it? No. Well, that's what it's coming down to. I don't think any parent should have to bury their kids. That's like the saddest thing ever. I don't really like seeing her upset if I'm going to act human for a second instead of joke around. Life and death. I, I understand that. No, you don't. Yes, you don't I understand do. the hurt you put other people through because you won't stop. You won't listen to what people say. You won't follow their lead. People are helping you right and left. Everybody is sacrificing, trying to get you to a place. Stop.
In the name of love, French fries are all I love. That you don't want to go. I've only been eating once a day. Well, yeah, I've changed that part of it. It's, I've changed my eating habits, but I haven't changed what I put in my body fully. Why what are you eating if you're only eating once a day? Because they would have... Maybe he's drinking that damn much soda. She would have... Stop defending your eating habits because nobody will believe that. Okay? And nobody. That's fine. Nobody. And, uh, you know, you can, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Dr. Now's got a smile on his face like, yes, we got a new screw up. This episode's going to kill it. The scale doesn't lie. And I didn't say it did, but like I just said. So, you know, you keep repeating, I made the changes, I made only one time a day. Argue that with the scale. Don't kid yourself. Don't bother. I don't know, Doc. We've heard other patients ask if it's calibrated or not. I need to see the thing the last time it was checked. i come back uh, next time if you haven't lost any weight. So I'm giving you the same goal as the last time, to lose 70 pounds in two months. But if you haven't lost any of a uh, significant weight, there's no point in worry about coming back. Okay. Damn, you're getting kicked out this quick? Also, is that, that's not like a bleaching thing, that's orange. You think he's just shooting like hot sauce out of his hog or something? So, I hope you make the changes and y'all take care. Thank you, take care. All right. Keep doing what you're doing, Willie. I'll bury you in another year or two. Keep doing what you're Sure, Mom, keep doing what you're doing, bringing him food, doing all this and that. You're the one that brought the salad with all the crispy and the breading and everything when you know he's on a low carb diet. Fuck's sake with the bananas. Oh, you can't have fruit on Dr. Now's diet. I don't know why people think fruit's all that healthy. When you're on low carb, definitely not. Extra virgin oil, olive oils? Mm -hmm. Since my last appointment, my mom's been trying to help me do better with my diet. So she's been coming over more, helping me make healthier meals. I think it's working because I'm feeling pretty good. I don't think mom understands the diet either. Also, bananas, strawberries, two glizzies, and uh, eggs. That's probably getting pretty damn close to 800 calories right there. And I know Dr. Now wants me to lose a certain amount, but I also know any weight loss is a good weight loss. So I'm gonna be proud of myself as long as I keep losing. This is the biggest dose of copium I've seen in a while. Just put one tablespoon of the picante sauce. Oh. So. Okay, and not all of it's for him. As far as low carb goes, if he stayed away from the fruit, he'd be a little closer to what he needed to be. I didn't put much cheese on because I was oh, trying no. to keep the calorie count down. So always keep in mind, again, how many calories you put in. You need to look at what he's asking you to do. As long as I'm losing weight, I don't care if it's what anybody wants me to lose or if it's five, ten pounds. We're 600 pounds. Do you know how easy it is to lose five pounds? A hell of a lot easier than you guys realize. I'm still looking at it as any weight loss is weight is good weight loss. I mean, but I'm going to tell you, Dr. Now's giving you a goal to meet. And that needs to be what you concentrate on, is this is my goal, and I know I can do it and prove everybody wrong that I can do it. I love me a good spite weight loss. That's probably my favorite. When you do it just to spite somebody who says you can't, that's what I was doing. Not make an excuse of, well, I'm on a constant weight loss, so that's good enough. That's not good enough. I'm sure it is. I want to see you out there living and not just surviving. Yeah, I know. It's just I need you to work a little harder. I, I know. Love you. To be fair, and I've said this before, we can survive for a while. We're building up reserves of fat for later on. So sir, he's surviving. Love you. Okay, let's clean up. But I know that William does not listen to what I say, and he'll just sit there and nod his head and agree. And William has this bad habit of trying to say what people want to hear instead of what they, like, 
need to hear or the blunt side of it. Sometimes you just gotta tell it the way it is, even if it don't make you look great or anything. So William, how have you been doing on your diet? I've uh, been sticking to it closer. Closer or completely? Wow, that car does not sound very good. Maybe she has like, that sounds like her bearings are effed up. Not completely, but a lot closer than I have been. I still have cravings of different things, pizza, bread, things like that. Think she might just be grinding straight rotor, but yeah, cravings, they're not going to go away overnight. You're still eating some of the stuff you shouldn't have. I'd say it takes a while to lock in and actually get it and start doing it correctly. Last week I did have, I did end up getting a pizza, um, but then I ate it over like two or th two days. And oh, we spread it out. Thank God we can have a pizza party at 600 pounds while we're on a damn TV show about losing weight. Then I threw the rest of it away because I left it out. Um, but it, but before I would I would eat a whole large pizza at one time, and this liar. I saw you eat two actually, but. Uh, I screwed up at first, too, so maybe he'll get it together. This time I've kind of portioned it out a little bit better. But you gotta be sure to stay away from the sodas and the carbs. I don't know. Here's the problem with people who think they can do, like, low-carb diets and then have a little bit of carbs here or there. You're eating, like, sometimes fat and stuff like that, right? So I find if you add even the tiniest bit of carbs, you could actually gain weight if you're not careful. At my last appointment, I was 580, and I was supposed to lose 70 pounds to be down to 510 today. Oh, we are so screwed. He doesn't look even a little bit different. And I'm really hoping I did that or at least got close. No wonder he... I thought he wasn't going to hit 600 in this TV show. You gained 18 pounds? I guess that's what happens when you're clapping some cheesy bread. What the heck? That doesn't make sense. Oh, the Reese's Riddler doesn't understand what's going on here. And we're ready to go to room five. Okay. I'm not sure how that happened. It's almost like the scale's not working. Unless, maybe it's the soda pop I've been drinking. I told you guys, them air calories are a sneaky mother, man. Casper the calorie goes slide right up in your ass, make you gain weight. I cut back with pretty much everything except for that. Because that's the hardest thing to give up. I don't drink it at home anymore, but I mean, at work, it's right there. Okay, basically he's telling us he's going like ham on the fountain drinks. That is not going to make you... Even if he was doing low-carb, still drinking soda, nothing's going to go right here. So, William, what's going on with you? With all that talk, you ain't and gain weight. So what's up with that? Um, I thought I was doing better, and evidently I'm not. But just seeing that skill is the eye-opener I feel like I might have needed to realize. I can't stand the way he just says, he's saying what people want to hear. That's all he keeps doing. And it's really starting to annoy me. I said, hey, what I'm doing is not enough. I need to do more. I need to push myself more. Um, and I mean, I know nobody believes me because I've been saying it. And so all I can do is show that, hey, I'm serious about what I'm saying and just prove everybody wrong that, hey, I'm going to be fair to him, though. My follow-through game wasn't exactly the best, either. I kept saying for a long time I was going to do a lot of stuff I didn't. Look, I realize my mistakes, and I'm changing them. Let me put that in the right perspective for you. In the past six months, uh, you have managed to gain six pounds instead of losing her 50 pounds. So you're still eating everything you want. And you know that's why you gain. So Whoa, whoa, Doc. I had one pizza and I ate it over two days. There's no way I'm gaining weight. Don't give me more stories. So, you should work in a fast food restaurant? Yes, sir. First thing I would say would be opportunity if we work somewhere else. And... Also, Long John Silver's does not count as a fast food restaurant. That place is just a grease bomb. Instead of being a kid in a candy store. And that's kind of... My next steps, actually, I'm actually going to start looking for a new job, uh, something to get me out of there. 
no matter what you say, you're going to do the same thing. And he really does need a new job, though. There's no way I think he could be successful working there. And you're going to gain more and more, and pretty soon you won't be able to walk. Now you can't drive, then you won't be able to walk, then you get in bed, then you'll be bedridden. And at that point, you will get people you manipulate to bring the food for you. You're going to gain more weight, and then down bed, your body is going to give out. So. Yep. Sleeping Beauty gets too many supersizes. They won't be able to get out of bed, and that's a bad place to be, and where nobody on this show wants to get. I don't know what else to tell you more than we have told you in the past six months. I don't know how many times you can repeat the same thing that you're killing yourself with the food and you're overeating and you keep saying, oh, I'm doing good, I'm going to change. I'm gonna... Now I'm awake, now I know what to do. I would He might actually think he knows what to do, though, because that's the problem. When you've never been on a successful diet or anything like that, he probably thinks he's doing a hell of a lot better than he is. Like, seeing him eat that fruit, I bet he thinks that the fruit's fine. It's not. It's not part of the diet. He don't want to be on Dr. Now. Low-carb diets are harder, in my opinion. Say with that weight gain that I've seen today on the scale, that scale is kind of an eye-opener today with that weight gain. There's no way you're putting in 1,200 calories. You're eating at least 5,000 calories a day, at least. You should know, lady. You're the damn chef. Well, he doesn't want to listen to anyone, and he thinks he can keep convincing us of his lies. But we don't believe him, and I bet you, you don't believe it either. Deep down inside, you don't believe what you're you saying, because you, you're, you're saying been so either. busy telling us what you think we want to hear. You Buddy, if you were in season one, you might have been able to swing. No, you probably couldn't even swing it then. Dr. Now's been lied to by every fat person in the world. He don't even want to hear nobody's stuff anymore when they come in there with some line. Tell people lies so people can get it off your case to protect your eating habit. So they give him every tool that he needs to make the changes, and he just doesn't want to, so there is nothing we can do with that. Well, he's a walking stroke right now. His blood. You can give him as many power tools as he wants. He's still going to end up like power drilling a powder donut or something. Pressure's up. He's carrying the weight of three people with one heart. It's, it's just a matter of time if he don't do something quick. And I'm going to be burying him instead of living life with him. Well, William, your mom is right. You're in pain to, to kill yourself with the food. We know that all... We definitely know that we're not going to have a long life if we don't change. It's the, the problem is you're looking at years of work and most people like can't get past that in their own head. It's it's a total lack of like self-confidence that makes it hard to start. And we're giving you every opportunity to change that in past six months. Nothing has worked. So I'm going to give you one last chance. And if we set up therapy, would you go to that? Yes, sir. OK. Damn, we're going to uh, therapy probably help him, though, because I, I forget when his spiraled out of control, but definitely therapy. Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing. I got two tickets to paradise. Well, so let, let's take you back to the beginning. Where, where'd you grow up, William? Um, so I grew up in Austin and around the Austin area. What, what was your weight like growing up? Um, so it was. Texas. It's been like three episodes in a row now that I've been in Texas. You guys really do make everything bigger. It was up until I want to say my sophomore year of high school, I weighed like. 90, 100 pounds, maybe. How tall were you? Um, I want to say like 5'5"-ish. Five, five okay. How the hell did we end up here? Oh, whoa. He weighed 100 pounds. So that was like one of my effing legs. You, you were a skinny kid. Yeah, I was really tiny. Not at all. Like, no. <laughs> so what'd you, what'd you do after high school? Um, so I went to Job Corps. Sure, sure. I know about um, that. Yeah. And then I met my ex-wife, and then we ended up getting married. Uh, this guy get mad, punched the wall or something, because he couldn't have any more pizza. Doctor now gave him shit. We got married about six months after we met. Okay, so pretty quick. Yeah. Then. Okay. You know, usually one mm -hmm. one person's um, pushing for the divorce, and it, she more so was. Okay. Um, and I told her that if she wanted the divorce, then she would have to file the paperwork and pay all the fees and all that. 
Um, he did. So he still wanted to be with her, and he kind of. I bet he kind of fell apart when that ended. So um, you stopped by making it hard for her. Yeah. Maybe, maybe she wouldn't mm -hmm. divorce you. How'd that work? Uh, we I doubt she was making it hard for him, but all right. Not divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Usually doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. How how steady was the weight gain after that point? Um, it was drastic. It was kind of almost like it wasn't overnight, but it seemed like it was almost okay. overnight. Any yeah. So we go to divorce, right? You take away this guy's uh eating out privileges, I guess we'll call it. And then he just starts eating everything. But that sucks. Contact with your ex-wife after that? No, we've had no contact um, since um, ever again. We you didn't even get to swing back for a quick trip quickie. Blocked each other on all social medias. Interesting. Um, things like that. OK. What's going on with your hand, by the way? I cut it uh, the other day. Yeah, and you know, I, the reason I asked is that bandage looks very homemade. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, do, it uh, doesn't doesn't look like a doctor no, took a look not, at that. Not at all. Very observant, Doc. The paper towel on his hand is homemade. I know, I've, you know, I've been telling everybody I was following the diet really closely, and I really wasn't, you know. It's just hard to change how I'm eating. Bro. We all knew you weren't following the diet. You just gained 18 pounds. Like, that riddle's, that's solved. We've already got that puzzle solved. And how I've been eating, like, oh, thank you. Of course. Y'all enjoy. Thank, thank you. you. And still with the f smoothies, man. You can't have that shit. So, that's where the food journal comes in. Yeah, I know. One thing I wrote down in there was telling everybody I was okay when I really wasn't. Just, you know, trying to mask it and hide it was what I thought I needed to do. Men typically not the best at sharing our feelings or anything like that. So we'll kind of have our guard up on that front. Some women are pretty bad at sharing their feelings. If they've been hurt before, they'll have their guard up. I realize now doing it, like that doesn't help anything. That makes everything worse, so. You need to talk. Yeah. Because when you hold things inside, all it does is bring you into a depressive state. It's hard to talk about. Um, I mean, when I was younger, you know, I felt alone. Like, I mean, I, people were always around, but I always felt secluded and just by myself a lot of times. That's terrible. But if you eat your feelings, you're never going to stop eating. You've got to feel something, right? Even if it's the divorce, whatever. You're just going to fall to pieces, and then there'll be nothing to pick back up if you just keep doing it like that. Well, I'm sorry you felt like that. If I had known, we would have addressed it then. Even though I was away, I've always been there for you to reach out to. Yeah, I know. It was just kind of easy. Oh, yeah, I forgot she left the state when he was a kid. That makes a lot of sense. It's easier to keep the distance and not have to own up to it than anything. But that can't fix the problem, so you gotta quit doing that now. Yeah. As an adult. Yeah. Hope, oh, God, we're at the end of the episode. This is just a total wash, isn't it? There's no way he's gonna get any better from here. Yeah, I know. But I'm so, I really am sorry that I didn't know that. It's okay. You know, I'm trying to get all these, all these emotions out and everything out. <laughs> I'm back at Dr. Now. Last time I was here, I was 598. He didn't give me a goal that time. Really, buddy? You came in here with a Krispy Kreme stain on the front of your shirt? This is straight sacrilegious. But told me to lose a significant amount of weight. 70 pounds was the original goal he gave me. That means I need to be down to 528 today. Oh, shit. We're clapped. It's game over from here, fellas. Nice to meet y'all. I mean, good good job. He played well. Uh, not really. Your weight today is 588. I really thought I was doing it right this time. So I don't know what Part of me thinks he actually believes that. Happened. I'm kind of devastated. I just don't know what to do. I'm starting to feel It's not really giving me devastated, but oh man, this sucks. And and William, you lost 10 pounds and you're down to 588. 
So what's going on with you and what's happening? So. That's right, explain yourself to the fat final boss. So last night I had a conversation with my uncle um, that made me realize there was more things that I was hiding and holding on to that um, wasn't gonna make me successful. Um, what does your uncle have to do with you double penetrating a Dr. Pepper every 10 seconds? It's a revolving around my grandmother's death that I believe that the family thought it was my fault. Um, so, and that I've been kind of, you know, hiding and holding down. And when I felt upset about it, I would do whatever I wanted to because. What do you guys think this guy did to Graham Graham? I thought it was Graham crackers, but he's going off on Graham Graham. It made me feel better. So I feel like with that emotional breakthrough I had last night would allow me to be more successful because I'm not holding on to anything anymore. Well, but yeah. essentially you haven't been truthful about yeah. your eating now. And yeah, that's another thing. I've um, I've lied to everybody um, saying, yes, I'm following the diet. Thank God we solved that because none of us knew you were doing that the whole damn time. The beginning, um, yes, I'm following the diet. Yes, I'm following it. When truthfully, I wasn't. I've realized that, you know, I've lied to you. I've lied to my mom. I've lied to my friends because I want to hide it. And hiding it doesn't do anything. It doesn't make anything successful. If anything, it makes everything a failure. First of all, we are not good at hiding. We're 600 pounds. Stop trying to hide things. It's written all over your face that you didn't do the damn diet. So uh, no hide and seek championship for us. Well, you know, essentially, William, you've been uh, untruthful to yourself as well. Uh, so you just keep saying the same thing and you believe it had and keep repeating what is not factually correct. And after you repeat it so many times to other people, it become a treat for you. So it's just a lot easier to lie to yourself than face like the accountability that comes with letting yourself get this big because it's kind of like crushing when you think about it so it doesn't matter uh, how many times you repeat something that is not correct it's not becoming true so that is something that you need to work with the therapy and all that the bottom line is in the 10 months you only lost four pounds at this point uh, there's wow we are really rolling at like less than half a pound a month right here huh not much we can do for you uh, unless you take control of your eating habit. Uh, the question is, are you still working in the fast food industry? Yes, sir, I am working and still working there. Um, I've been applying for the jobs, just nothing has come through yet. Um, and I can't afford to just leave my job without another one. I get that. At least he's working, he's trying to turn things around. But he could never be successful. And the way he likes food, there's no shot he can pull it off there. Lined up and ready to go because of my bills and things. So I have been looking. It's just nothing has come through. Well, you know, that, that's going to be an issue that um, you need to work on it. But at this point, we have uh, provided you with a diet. We have provided you with exercise. We have provided you with a therapy. And there's not much more we can uh, do it at this point. It kind of sucks when Dr. Now calls you a lost cause, though, because I guarantee part of him's probably given up on himself. But whenever somebody else says it, like, I have a lot of respect for Dr. Now. And I know that he's only doing what's right here. He can't baby people into losing weight. Like, you're going to have to want it for yourself. But if you don't want it, how can anyone else cheer for you? You're not cheering for yourself. You're not trying to turn your life around. Nobody else is going to help you here. It's all on you, buddy. So you're not going to be a candidate for weight loss surgery at this point. But if you continue with the therapy, we uh, maintain that for you. And we get you to some point that you're able to lose 70 pounds. You come back and we... You know how nice doctor now is. He's still trying to help the guy, even though the guy won't try to help himself. I guess he could fly to Mexico, though, but they might take a damn kidney or something work with you but until that point everything is going to be up to you yes sir i will change um and i will show you that i can lose that 70 pounds and i'm ready to lose this weight and finally get my life back well i wish you the best of luck if you lose the 70 pound 
Uh, we'll see you at the meantime. If you need anything, give me a call. Yes, sir. It kind of sucks to hear, like, better luck next time, gamer, but what can you do? He literally tried everything to tell the guy, like, no, this isn't working. Stick to this diet. Don't do this. Don't do that. If ignorance is bliss, this guy's the happiest mother I've ever seen in my life. It's been a couple months since I last saw Dr. Now, and even though I was discouraged at our last meeting, I'm still trying and I'm pushing myself even harder. Well, this looks like he's definitely on the diet now. At home, I've been stepping it up with my meal planning before my mom was doing a lot of it for me. But now I'm taking ownership of what I put in my body and that feels like a healthy step. Is that even cooked though? That looks like half frozen still. Well, after visiting Dr. Now, I mean, just hearing how he talked to me and how disappointed he was as well as my mom, I just needed to get everything together and focus even harder so I can lose the weight. Salmon mixed veggies. Why couldn't we do this from the start? But it takes sometimes it takes people a while to get rolling, so maybe he's got this in the future. So I've been looking for a new job. Just trying to find anything online that I can do that's gonna get me away from food and things like that. But I've been able Good call. You could be a male stripper. Thunder down under, baby. Able to quit soda lately, which honestly feels like the biggest deal out of everything. I really want to lose the weight and get back to having my life back and being able to do things that I enjoy doing again. It's crazy just how much you kind of like miss. Like once, because you totally shut down. Like you saw at the beginning, he had nothing going on. He still has not a lot going on, but he's trying now at least. So what do you think about this beautiful weather today? It's cold. Cold? It feels it's, good. It's cold. Me and my mom have been going on a lot of walks together, which has been pretty cool. Some days we talk about stuff, but other days we don't. I'm getting ahead of Some days we talk, some days we don't. Well, thanks for the update. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a nice routine and a healthy way for us to spend time together. Let's go see that's good but you need to stop teasing me with that midriff buddy that is uh too sexy too hot to handle the ducks are at the water okay. i'm still going to dr paradise and keeping up with my therapy the whole process has made me realize what a big challenge it is for me to stay honest about stuff i'm blaming this failure on women in general <laughs> i'm kidding but the divorce is what made him spiral but i don't think he can blame her as much as guys would love to blame their ex-wives for everything, uh, I don't think I'm going to get away with it this time. And I have a mainly female audience, so don't come for me. I, I'm just joking. Even with myself. So I'm trying to change that about myself and how I operate. Come on, I'm making it faster than you, and you're younger mm. than me. William does get frustrated with me because I do push him to try to walk faster or walk longer. But Look here, Speed Demon. This is not a race. Your son is 600 pounds because you came by to cook breakfast and offer seconds each morning. You can't turn it into a competition now that you've rigged the odds. It's all for his own good. I can push in the water. No. It's all for him to succeed in life. I dare you to try to push him in the water because you're probably bouncing backwards. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. But even though I haven't really succeeded with this process, I feel like something has awoken inside me to where I really want it now more than ever. Hey, you ready to walk us more? Yeah. There's no That's nice to hear. I mean, we are the master of our own success at the end of the day, and the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Nothing left for me to do but make the true William, the healthy William once and for all. And I can't wait for that. All right, well, that's it for William. Man, I really thought he was going to do good at the start. I got catfished hard on this one, but William struggled a lot. It seems like he's kind of getting it together towards the end. So, I, I mean, I wish the best for the guy, but some people just want to self-sabotage and they won't get out of their own way. And uh, if you stay in your own way, you're never going to reach the finish line. So hopefully William was able to turn it around 
I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think he's too worried about making people like like him almost because he says whatever they want to hear and also not concerned with sticking to the diet at all because he thought smoothies were going to do it in Dr. Now's program. But leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think about William, and uh, William buddy, get it together. Peace.